Here we go. Hi, I'm Sherry. Hi. <laughs> and I want to introduce you to Liz Moran. A lot of you may know Liz Moran from my training guide. She does a whole great section on student tours. And surprise, surprise, she's in a hotel room. So <laughs> Again, at the LAX hotel room, nonetheless. And tell them where you're going. I'm picking up a tour to New Zealand and Australia tonight. Then I, that's a three-week tour. I come home. I go to Washington, D.C. for two back-to-back -back student tours. Then I go back to New Zealand, Australia. And then after that, I pick up a tour to Japan. So I'm on the road about nine months, ten months out of the year. Yeah. So she's a little busy and <laughs> obviously smiling that she loves it. <laughs> so Liz, why did you tell them how you got started and how you got your first step into leading tours? Uh, well, well, this kind of goes back to when I was in high school, actually. I was a high school exchange student, uh, part of AFS, and I went to South Africa. But I studied television. I went to USC, and at my job job, I started uh, creating day tours for all the AFSers, the Ford students living in Los Angeles. So it turned into day trips, weekend trips, four days at the Grand Canyon until somebody said, you know, you can get paid for doing that. And this actually led me to you. I, <laughs> of course, somebody told me about it. It was in the learning annex. Remember that? That was a long time ago. And that's how I took your course. That was my first online course. <laughs> <laughs> and then how did you, what was your first tour? Uh, well, you were paid right for? after your course, it was um, just before... Obama's first inauguration. And you had posted a link from EF Smithsonian. They were recruiting tour directors. I had never been to Washington, D.C. since I was in junior high school. <laughs> so I applied and they interviewed me and they actually flew me and actually a whole bunch of us out to Washington, D.C. to show us around, introduce us to the company. And boom, I had this small group from Pennsylvania. I had this old broken down school bus that uh, broke down a couple of times. <laughs> so I had to basically lead this tour on foot and having only been to DC once, you know that old expression, you have to fake it till you make it? Yeah, we all do that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to prepare because had I not become one with that map, I would have just been in an awful lot of trouble. So part of being a, a good tour director is doing a lot of advanced prep work. Uh huh. And then I know you did some docent work. I, I oh, that, well, that, that was before. One. Well, that was sort of in conjunction with taking your tour. Um, I was lucky in that I had the kind of job job where I could work at home in large part. So it wasn't like I had a nine to five job that I had to give up. I was doing things simultaneously. I was a docent at El Pueblo. That's the birthplace of Los Angeles in downtown. Everybody calls it Alvera Street, but really the area is called El Pueblo. So I did that for free just to get my um, uh, chops and leading tours, you know, eye contact and where to position yourself when you're speaking to a group. And then I was a step on guy giving Los Angeles city tours. And then I did a lot of student tours in Los Angeles. I did a lot of the Disney Magic Music Day tours. This is way before I got into Washington, D.C. Then the market crashed in 2007, 2008. Awesome time to switch careers. Yeah, we all remember that. <laughs> so all the tour operators were not hiring. I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So actually, you again saved the day. Ah. The, you did. You remember Robert, Robert Smolkin? You gave his name at Princess Cruises. Yes. He was looking for somebody who knew Asia and who was a good public speaker. And I have written several books, five books actually, one on classical feng shui with uh, my former husband, and so I knew Asia, really, from him, and it was the non-interview. It really it was 15 minutes, and he said, well, when can you be on the ship? So that's how I really got in and got to know a lot of the international destinations for Princess Cruises. I worked at the port lecturer, and then I segued in the back door to become a tour director for many tour operators, leading tours for Americans all over the U.S. and going abroad and for foreigners coming into the U.S. So I spend many plates and I still do student tours as well. 
I think it's great. And it's funny, I, the, you, I know you did a great job on Princess because at the end of every cruise, everyone uh, evaluates. And I've been on enough cruises. I love that job. You're gone. I miss that job. And I have so many, many crew friends, particularly in Shore X. But, you know, it evolved into something that I didn't really like. And I didn't want to be at sea for nine months at a time. So there's that. Well, you did a great job, and you wouldn't have been there because <laughs> they get rid of people really fast if they don't. So wonderful. And what do you like about tour directing? Well, you get paid to see the world. <laughs> <laughs> What's not to like about that? Uh, you know what? There's certain qualities you have to have to be a really good tour director. Remember what you need to like people. Honestly, if you don't like people, you're in the wrong business. Because you see the whole spectrum of humanity, the worst and the best. And so you're not only a tour director or a tour manager or a trip leader, whatever different tour operators call it. You are a cop, a social worker, a mom, and you just have to really uh, tread lightly on some, uh, you know, sensitive situations. And anyway, and you have to be highly organized, super uber crazy organized and a lot of pre-planning. It's not like I get assigned a tour, like for tonight example, this tour started for me two weeks ago with um, updating all my tour materials. I'm in contact with the ground operators, which are also called the incentive operators or the inbound operators. There's names for different things. Uh, just getting the updated itineraries, who my driver is, are there uh, differences in hotels this time around. So there's a lot of advanced work that goes on and I'm usually on, I'm on tour when I'm doing this. And how would you compare, I know a lot of people get in through student tours, how would you compare student tours to regular adult tours? What's the difference? Uh, they're a whole different animal. It, a student tour is actually a really good way to get into adult tours. Um, well, you're dealing with kids, number one, and there's just different things. Like with uh, student tours, I'm not in charge of head counts at all. That's the role of the teacher or the escort, and I've actually had some funny experiences. One time, um, it was a Disney Magic Music Days program, and this group bust in from Colorado. And so, you know, they have their escorts, and they do the head counts, and they distribute the keys, and they check in the kids at night, and they have, you know, their rooms taped, and security comes. So I went to bed. Okay, my job is done. I had a phone call in the middle of the night from my boss saying, Elizabeth, there's a kid on the bus. Now, the bus was in the yard in Anaheim. This kid was asleep under a pile of who knows what, and he woke up and thank God he had a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> the dad was really cool about it, and it wasn't my fault because, again, I'm not in charge of head counts. Like, I count anyway. I just kind of do it really discreetly just in case that ever happens again. <laughs> And the dad probably that oh typical for this kid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and students, anyway. you know what? The kids were actually really good. It's the, and the teachers are awesome as well. The problems I have had, and you can ask any student tour director the same question, and we'll all give the same answer. The issues have to do with the parents, particularly the moms who want to hijack the tour, or they've walked too much and they're too tired and they go a wall things like this. So I, you know, I tend to work for the tour operators one exclusively now that really is, they, they know the game and there's very little parents that accompany the groups. Easier without them. Mm -hmm. So what would you say to somebody trying to get into business today? What kind of advice would you give them looking back? Well, you, have, you have to kind of take baby steps. I mean, if you have a job job, a nine to five job, it's not like you can quit your job and expect to work full time. You just can't. Yeah. I on tell people weekends, don't quit your job. <laughs> right. On the weekends or in the evenings, there's several things you can do. You can work for uh, what's called DMCs, destination management companies. And they're say like Microsoft is in, you know, Orange County or Los Angeles or Scottsdale, wherever. And they have a big, um, can, convention, then they would hire a DMC, which is a staff of people to take, uh, to, to do the hospitality, the airport meet and, meet and greets, and the, what's called dine arounds, and these kind of functions. And that's a great way to get in. And that's um, all year round, depending on where you live. So 
you learn a lot there. And then there's also docenting, even at your local museum, or if there's a um, well a landmark like El Pueblo in Los Angeles, you need to learn how to speak and to be comfortable speaking in front of people and speak clearly in front of people and give uh, directions uh, or information clearly as well. So once you have that down, then it's really easy to segue into student tours. Student tours are generally in April and May, and that's when the kids have their spring break, and so that makes sense, right? There are student tours that go year round, but the student tour operators tend to give those assignments to their senior staff, those who've been around a lot. Like you. Well, yeah, I guess I'm a war, war, war horse by now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, any words of wisdom to new people? Just a You have to persevere. I know a lot of the, there's like IATDG and there's ITMI and there's that school in Colorado. I don't know their name. I didn't go to any of these schools and I'm not really um, active on IATDG, even though I'm a member. Uh, and I know they all have symposiums now and there's group interviews with different tour operators. It's not enough just to be interviewed. You have to follow up. And I just do a lot of gentle nurturing of relationships. I mean, I know them all and they, they know me by now. And just every once in a while, just check in and say, hey, you know, hi, it's Elizabeth. I'm from Sydney. I'm just uh, seeing how you are and checking in. Don't say, do you have a job? I mean, just don't even mention it. Just check in every once in a while. I send postcards that's to tour operators just to have their name in front of them, my name in front of them, I should say, and um, continually being um, uh, just conscious of what you want to do, what direction you want to go down, and work towards that objective. But you have to persevere. You can't give up. You can't. Yeah, I, I always tell people it took me a year and a half of just riding back and forth to get a job on the ship for free taking care of the kids. Well, it just I just landed a gig, this, this gig to Japan I just mentioned at the beginning of this little program of yours. It took me three years to get into this tour operator. It's a high-end tour operator. Three years! <laughs> Every once in a while, I would just send a bow's card from wherever I am or just check in by email, and you just have to be patient because it'll come to you eventually. I just got this email out of a blue. I had a tour that canceled, got an email from them, are you available? Boom, so it just happened. And that's just the way it rolls in this, in this um, industry of ours. That's so true, so true. And it, it's, it's worth the persistence, I have to say. It yeah, is it is. worth it's, it all. It, it's a fun job, and I love running to my tour director friends, and you know, they become really good friends of mine. I had a couple just come to my house a couple months ago, and then a fellow tour director from Canada, she came down to the, the travel show in Los Angeles just this past weekend. So that's another good tip, too. There's travel shows a lot all over the country. Go to the travel shows and familiarize yourself with a lot of these tour operators. You They're know, all there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, one, the people that are there are usually the salespeople, so they're not necessarily the ones hiring tour directors, but it's a good way to get to know them, get the literature, and find exactly. out about them. And find out and, if they even hire tour directors. Yeah. Um, companies now only hire tour directors in the destination, um, but there's, there are companies who hire American or Canadian tour directors to accompany the group. And find out what they're called. Sometimes they're not called tour directors. So when you're emailing that company and you know they call that person a trip leader, you need to learn, you need to use that same verbiage. Perfect. Shows you did your homework. Yeah. <laughs> and you know them. That's what I've already had lessons on that where they, I say, now investigate, go to their website, da 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 da. Wow. Know as much as you can, so you're not telling them. Well, I can do Australian. I'm great at Australia, and they do Washington D.C. tours. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> not going to impress them at all. So, thank you, Liz, and you're have welcome. a welcome. Yeah. And I know everybody will appreciate your your help, and um, hope to see you out on the road. Anytime.